Well, thanks a bunch for coming today. Let me just set up the clock here. Great. Um, I'm, I'm Steve Greenberg. Can everybody hear me? Audio good? Yes? All right, great. You tell me, tell me if it's now a little bit shaky. All right, is the audio guy here? Or should I just speak, just speak louder? Okay, until the audio guy gets here, I'll speak a lot louder. Uh, I really appreciate everyone coming here today. I'm Steve Greenberg, and I'm one of the engineers uh, working on Microsoft Access. And I hope you're here today because you want to learn how to report better on SharePoint data. Is that true, everyone here? New ways to report on SharePoint data? Great. OK, if so, you've come to the right place. We're going to be talking about using Access 2010 to report on SharePoint data. I think I'm going to leave this presentation with some bizarre form of whiplash as I go like this and this all the time. So data doesn't have any meaning until it's sliced and diced, sorted and filtered, grouped and aggregated, and then ultimately formatted to make a point. This is, in general, what we call reporting. And one of the primary roles of IT organizations is to do that reporting themselves and to enable their organizations, the people in their organizations, to also report. Now, Access has been in the reporting game for quite a long time. Does anyone recognize this? Raise your hands if you recognize this. OK, this is great. Excellent. So this is the Northwind's invoices report from Access 2.0 from 1993. Um, so we've been doing reporting for a long time, but the kinds of data that you want to report on have really changed quite a bit in the 16 years since our team created that report. And these days, we know that a lot of the data that you need to report on as part of your day-to-day -day job is in SharePoint lists because of SharePoint's popularity. And in fact, as SharePoint grows more and more popular, the data from SharePoint lists is coming in from new places. A great example of this is the Business Data Catalog, now called BCS, Business Connectivity Services. So now, you're reporting on data in SharePoint, and no longer does all that data come in via users manually entering it. Instead, you're accessing line of business data through SharePoint. And each additional data source that you have creates more and more needs for you to do reporting on it. And actually, SharePoint does a very good job of enabling reporting out of the box. But there are a couple of places where there are some limitations. One of them is that ad hoc joins are difficult. Of course, you can set up lookups when you're designing a list from scratch. But doing the kind of ad hoc relational analysis going beyond the capability of lookups in SharePoint is absolutely possible, but not totally accessible to the end users in your organization. Another difficulty with SharePoint is doing queries across large lists of data. SharePoint, as we all know, is designed from the ground up so that no single user can easily take down the site. And as a result, SharePoint puts throttles and limits on the types of queries that can be run and the size of data that can be returned. So this also presents a problem. Now, Access can step in here and help. So Access has a very powerful query engine that enables you to do joins, filters, sorts, grouping, aggregates, and really handles one-to-many data, parent-child data, master-child data very well. Access has a caching layer that addresses the, the limitations of SharePoint query, because we have our own cache that we pull SharePoint data into. And finally, Access has a report designer that's very flexible and allows you to very quickly build very customized reports to meet your needs. 
So we're about to dive into a demo to show you all this in action. But before we do, I want to quickly step away from the audience that's in this room. We're probably all IT professionals and professional developers. And think for a minute about the end users that we support. What's the value of access to these folks? So I propose that there are three main value props for this audience. The first is that access reports are approachable. If you make a report and you pass it off to one of the people in your business units, and they want to change the filter, put on their own group by, maybe filter down to their region, it's possible for them to do it because the report designer is built for regular end users. So it's approachable. The second is that when you bring access together with SharePoint, you get agility with manageability. You keep enabling your business unit users to build applications on their own, but you also make sure that that data is managed. And by managed, I mean that it's backed up, that it's secured by SharePoint permissions, and that you're sure that there's only one version of the truth. Because your end users ultimately want to make sure that when a hard drive fails, because they always do, that their data doesn't get lost. And the third value prop is that it's especially re relevant for these times. And that is that ultimately access is a very affordable solution for developing reports. It's just it, there's not much uh, requirements up front. And so by building reports and access, you can free up budgets for other activities as well. So with that introduction, we're going to just dive right into a demonstration. Okay, now this demonstration starts from a blank slate. I'm going to start with Access 2010, and I'm going to create a new blank database. Now, rather than starting off and creating my data inside Access, the first thing that I'm going to do here is I'm going to link to SharePoint data. So I'll close this table, and instead go to external data, and choose to link to a SharePoint list. Now for this demo, we'll assume that the data that I'm reporting on is simple survey data. I've circulated some surveys to customers, and I've got data about the, the return results of those surveys. So the two lists that I want to pull into access are the survey results and some information about the employees who collected those surveys. So I click those two uh, lists, and I click OK. And Access is now establishing links to those two SharePoint lists. Let's take a look for a second at the relationship window. I'm going to go backstage to relationships. You'll see that the relationship that is defined in SharePoint comes down and is immediately visible in Access. And SharePoint has actually done quite a bit of work for this release to beef up their relationships story. So now they have cascades elite and restrict elite. So, and those relationships as well are respected when the data is brought into access. We'll close this, and let's create a query. Because what I want to show you first is that I can address that initial concern, which is that it's sometimes difficult in SharePoint to do ad hoc joins of data. So we're going to create a query. And we're going to drag in the survey results and the employees table. And I'm going to choose to project the order number, the three pieces of data that I collected from every customer I talked to, and some basic information about the employee who conducted that survey, their name, and the office they're from. And so now I'll save this as survey results with employee data. I like long query names. And we'll view it in a data sheet. And just like that, I've taken two lists on SharePoint, joined them together, and projected them in access. Now the next thing that I want to do is create a report on this data. 
And one of the intents of access is that wherever possible, we want you to be able to not have to start from scratch. And instead, to get started 50, 60, 90 percent down the way and then customize something that's already built. Because starting from scratch is a pain in the butt. So, what I'm going to do here is use this feature that we call Quick Create. And I'm going to Quick Create a report. And so with one button click, I now have an out-of-the-box report with all the data from those two SharePoint lists. And now I can customize this report, shape the data to match the shaping that I want, and format it the way that I want. But I don't have to worry about starting from a blank canvas and pulling the fields from scratch. Another tenet of access is that we think you shouldn't have to leave the context of the data as you do your formatting and your shaping. In many other report designers, you're constantly flipping, you may constantly find yourself flipping back and forth between design view and the runtime view of the report. So if you resize the text box, you have to go and look at the report in the runtime view to make sure you didn't truncate any text or that you didn't leave too much white space, or that it continues to fit on one printed page. In Access as a report designer, you can do all your shaping, grouping, filtering, sorting, and formatting of the data while looking at the actual data itself. So over the next minute or so, as I customize this report, watch how I'm always looking at the real data. So what I want to do here is group by employee and show survey results by employee so that I can see who's got good survey results and who's got not so good survey results. So look, I want to analyze the quantitative data. So this comments column is so interesting to me, so I'll delete it. I want to make sure that the office is all the way on the left, so I pull that over. We'll put employee name right next to office, so I'll pull that over as well. We'll resize these columns so that we are using space effectively. And now we want to group. And again, you can group and filter and sort and sort, filter and sort, without losing the context of the data. So watch as I right click one of the, the cities and choose group on office. And I can similarly choose one of the employees, right click, and choose group on employee name. And just like that, I've grouped my data. Now, the next thing that I want to do is add up the product and service quality results from the survey and average them so that I can know, again, what's going well and what's going poorly. Again, this can be done totally within the context of the data itself. Right click the field, and choose total product quality, and we'll do an average. Same thing with service quality. Right click, total service quality, average. And now I've got averages, both for the person and for the office that they work in. Now these actually need to be, have two more decimal places so I get a little bit more precision. And I can click that, and I just, well, just like that, I've got the data that I want. So this kind of analysis in context allows people to be able to shape their data without having to leave the context of the data. And it saves you time. So now that you've got the data that you want, you want to make sure that you have impact with the data. And one of the things that can really help here is conditional formatting. So conditional formatting has been in access for a couple of releases. But when we improved it, this release, it used to be that you were limited to three rules for conditional formatting, which was a fairly limiting number, and now you have up to 50 rules. So what I want to do here is take these fields and put some conditional formatting. So I go to the conditional, to the conditional formatting button in the ribbon, and I select it, and I choose new rule. And I'll select that when the field value is greater than or equal to 4, 
That's probably a situation in which something good is happening, so I'll make it green and bold. And when the value is less than or equal to 2, that's not such a good situation. So we'll make that red. And so just like that, now I can view it in a report view, I've got a report that highlights the bad situation and the good situations. But again, speaking of wanting to maximize the impact of your reports, you can't do that unless the reports get into the hands of the people who are going to make decisions based on them. There are many ways to accomplish this, but one common way is to circulate the data via PDF or XTS in email. This used to require an add in to access, but for 2010, we baked it into the product. Print preview, export to PDF, publish it, and now if I go to my desktop, I must have published to another file location. Let's try that again. PDF or XTS, this time we'll choose the desktop, publish. Okay, there we go. So you can see that the data in the PDF looks exactly the same way that it looks inside of Access. But sometimes reports are just the beginning of an application, and you want to actually build some interactivity around the report. One of the interesting things about Access is that reports have the same eventing and programmability model that forms do. So I can hook up events to reports and attach VBA to them the same way that I can do with forms. So there's obviously a wealth of things that you can do by hooking in VBA. But I'm just going to show you a very simple example. Let's again bring this into layout view. And let's make it, actually let me back up one second. The scenario here is that when I click on, uh, let's see, I accidentally just did this for didn't see the report. So let me, uh, let me quick create a report here. All right, we're gonna have to make do with this report which doesn't have the grouping that I just showed you. That'll teach you to auto-click no. Um, so the scenario here that I want to move forward with is that uh, when I created that report, I only took in the quantitative data, not the comments data. So let's say that when somebody's viewing the report, I want them to be able to drill through to the full set of survey data. So to do this, I might create a detail form. And doing this, I can use the same quick create feature that I used for that report. With one click, I have a detail form which shows all the data for the survey and actually allows the user to edit that data as well. So we'll save this as survey details. And now, going back to my report, I want to hook it up so that when I click on the order number, that survey details form pops open. I go to the property sheet, and I choose the on click event. Now, I could dive into here to VBA, and I'm sure that many people in this room are very familiar with VBA. So I'm going to choose to do something different. We've invested a lot in this release in Access Macros. And one of the reasons that we've done that is that Access Macros are approachable to business unit users in a way that VBA is not. They work for non-professional programmers much more easily. So let's choose a macro builder and we'll talk a little bit about this approachability. On the right side, we see an action catalog. That lists all the actions that I can take with the macro. And if I know that what I want to do is open up a form, I can just type in the search box form, and it quickly filters down to all of the macro actions that have anything to do with forms. It's not hard for me to discover the open form action, which sounds like something I'm interested in. So I double click it. And now with a double click, 
I've got a template here which shows exactly the parameters that I need to fill in to get this macro action to work. And it steps me through each filling out each of these parameters. So for form name, I can just drop it down and choose my survey details form name. For the window mode, I can say, well, let's open it up in the dialog. And now the weird condition is a little trickier. So when I click the order in the report, I want the form to open and filter down only to the record that I was on. So I'm building a where clause here that's passed to the query engine. So we'll just go like this and we'll type order num. Because order num is the field, it's the first, the, the left side of the SQL where clause. So that's the order in the full order num field in the form. And I want it to filter down to the situation where the order num is equal to reports. Perfect. Now, one of the things you may see here is that we have IntelliSense, which is brand new in macros for this release, which really makes, helps people, helps walk people through the process of filling out complicated expressions like this in the same way that IntelliSense helps people out with functions in Excel. So we'll complete that and close. And this time, I'll remember to save. So now, if we view this report, in report view, and I click on order number, you'll see that it pops up the details form and it filters down to the person, to the order that I was looking at. The only thing that I don't like about this report right now is that this doesn't look clickable. It looks like every other field in the report. Let's go to the property sheet for this field and change the format to display as a hyperlink. Okay. Now I've got a great report, and this is obviously clickable. Okay, great. Let's go back to the deck. So what you just saw in that demonstration, which by the way was only about 10 minutes or so, was that I started from absolute scratch. I connected up to two SharePoint lists. I joined them together, created a report on them, and added some interactivity to the report very, very, very quickly. Let's talk about another strength of Access. Access has always been the duct tape of data connectivity. Connects to everything. You can use Access to connect to your 1970s era mainframe data, and you can use Access to connect to modern data from the web. No application beats Access when it comes to the strength. SQL, OADB, ODBC, XML. Access connects to everything. But there's a new paradigm in line of business connectivity these days. And it's called service-oriented architecture. Probably some of you in this room are very familiar with it. What it means is that you don't expose broad connections to your SQL databases any longer. Instead, you provide narrow, specific, well-defined connections to your data via web services. So now, a lot of data in corporations is only accessible via web services. And so access is going to continue to be the duct tape of data connectivity. We felt we needed to address this and connect to line of business data. So we integrated with ECS and BBC for this release. Now, I'm betting that a lot of people in this room are pretty familiar with BBC. But in a nutshell, what BBC, or now BCS, allows you to do is connect to line of business data through well-defined interfaces. There's an XML file with metadata that describes how the line of business data implements those interfaces. And SharePoint knows how to consume that metadata. And now, for Access 2010, so does Access. Now, Access's integration with BCS is a little bit of a twist 
on the standard story because it's actually client side, not server side. BCS has a client component that Access uses to talk to line of business data. And that means that actually SharePoint isn't, act, isn't required for BCS connectivity, although it makes it a lot easier. And one of the things about that, one of the reasons that we made it so that it's entirely client side, is because we think it opens up a whole new set of scenarios. So Access should be able to talk to web services in general so that you can write applications that integrate with public web services, like those provided by FedEx or UPS to track packages. And so now with Access 2010, you can do that via BCS. And we're really excited about the set of applications that this enables. So let's return to it to our demo and take a look at how we interact with BCS data inside of Access 2010. I've got my application here again, and we're going to connect to BCS data. And we're going to start with SharePoint Designer. So here's my external content types for this server, and there are three from Contoso that interest me. Now, if I want to get out the metadata for these three connections, here we go, I can right click and say export application model. And what that does is it creates an XML file that represents the metadata, that contains the metadata, and that can be consumed by Access so that Access can connect to the, meta, to the BCS data the same way that SharePoint can connect to it. So let's do that. Let's export the application model. Let's call it Contoso. We'll say Client Settings. Click OK. Wait for a second. Okay, great. And we'll save the XML file. Great. Now let's go back to Access. And I'm going to go to my external data tab one more time. This time, I'm not going to connect to SharePoint. I'm going to connect to BCS. So more data services. We've got to install that connection. Teach Access to talk to the metadata. So we'll go here and select Contoso. And right now, Access is parsing that XML metadata, XML metadata to learn how to talk to BCS. And once it's done doing that, you'll see that I've got three essentially linked tables that Access now knows how to talk to. Customers, orders, and order types. So this is the line of business data that I want to join together with the data that was in SharePoint. So for each of these, I'm just going to click it and create a little table. Orders, create a link table, and finally, order types and create a link table. So now I've got five tables in Access that I can query on and report on and create forms on, and yet none of these were created in Access. Two of them came from SharePoint, and three of them are connections through BCS to my line of business data. So now, let's create a query on these. Again, we'll go to the query design, and this time we're going to join together the survey results with the orders and customers data that comes from my line of business system. So through orders, we'll talk customers and then order types. Great. Just order these a little bit differently. Now you see that for BCS, the join data doesn't come through, so I've got to actually specify that as part of my Query, but it's pretty simple. Just drag and drop the, the uh, connection between customer ID goes to ID, order type goes to code. And now I'm going to again pull in the standard survey data, but this time I'm going to actually additionally pull in the customer and order data. So the cost of the order, <clears throat> the code and description for the order, and the state and zip for the customer. And we'll save this query as survey results with customer data. Great. So now I've got another joint query that takes together SharePoint data and BCS data and provides a view for me. Let's create a report on this one. Survey so results with customer data, create, report. 
And then save this. Great. Now we've got two reports, one of which stores together SharePoint data, one of which pulls in BCS data. I want to pause for a second and talk about themes. Uh, some of you who used PowerPoint 2007 or Word 2007 are probably familiar with the themes infrastructure of Office. With one click, you can change the entire look of your document or your PowerPoint presentation. And you do this because you want it to match your mood, match the way you want to present yourself to a customer, or match the corporate colors and corporate fonts that are standard for your organization. Now, for Access 2010, we've integrated with the same themes infrastructure. And this means that you can make sure that your databases look the same as your documents or your PowerPoint decks. Let's see that in action. I'm in layout view, choose themes, and I can play around with a bunch of different themes. That's not so good. We'll just choose this one. Now, we think that, in general, people want their applications to have a consistent look and feel. So out of the box, by default, when you choose a different theme, we actually change every single form and report in the application to match that theme. So you can see that my other report that I created earlier in the presentation also matches that theme. So it's easy to make sure that your database looks consistent. Now I've only got two reports here on the left side, but let's say that I keep doing this for a week and I end up with 12, 20, 30 reports. After a certain amount, it can get kind of awkward and unwieldy for people to choose reports using that left navigation name. And so access gives you a way to stitch together your reports and your forms into a common navigation model. Now, historically, Access had a way to do this. It's called the switchboard. Anybody here familiar with switchboards? Great. Excellent. So switchboards served very well for many years, um, and indeed are still in the product. However, the standard paradigm, the standard expectation around how applications are built has changed. People now expect applications to work like web applications, like websites. They expect navigation to be tabs across the top or buttons down the side or some combination thereof. And the switchboard doesn't really match that. And so we wanted to update this. And so if I go into the application, we created a new type of form called the navigation form. So watch how quickly I can pull together these reports into a single reporting center. Click navigation. We have a bunch of options. I'm going to select horizontal tabs. So now I've got horizontal tabs. I'll call this my reporting center. And we'll save it. We'll just call this home. OK. Let's close these two down. And now watch as I just drag these into the reporting center. I, it's a drag and drop experience to create a tab navigation. So now in the last 10 minutes of this demo, I've been able to take BCS data, combine that with SharePoint data. Actually, I'm going to go back to my deck for a second here. There we go. And I had combined BCS data with SharePoint data and built a whole navigation to stitch it together. I want to return now to something that I talked about earlier in the talk, which is performance. So Access has very good performance against tens of thousands of items in SharePoint. And I want to show you that a little bit. But to do that, I have to geek out for a second and talk about the architecture that Access uses to talk to SharePoint. So in this slide, we start out with SharePoint on the top with some lists that I want to connect to, and Access on the bottom. Access pulls in the data using the same public web services that you use to talk to SharePoint. 
And at that point, what we've got in Access is a big XML blob with a bunch of data in it. And that's actually where Access 2007's integration with SharePoint stopped. And actually, it's pretty good. We know a bunch of customers who build very compelling solutions with 2,000 records with this architecture. But it doesn't scale well beyond its comfort zone. And its comfort zone ends at about two, three, four thousand 4,000 records. And the reason is because you've got this big XML blob that you're reading and writing to. It blows memory, and every time you load the database, you have to pull all the data in. So for Access 2010, we write that data into local tables. And those tables are persisted on disk. And this means that you get the same performance that you do when you're talking to the tables that you created when you, from Access, directly in Access. So after this operation, your queries, your forms, your reports, and your macros read their data directly from the local tables. What happens when we write data? It's a write through cache. And this means that your SharePoint data in your list is always up to date. OK, let's see this in action. I'm going to show you a, a, sort of an A-B side-by-side -side performance show here with Access 2007 versus 2010. Now, I'm taking Access 2007 outside its comfort zone. Okay, I want to put that up front here. This is not Access 2007's comfort zone. And I don't have 2007 running on any machine here, so I have a video to show you. What I've got here is a list with 40,000 records in it, SharePoint list, and it's a list of orders. And all I'm doing is grouping them by price. But that requires me to iterate through the entire record set. Now, this is actually, as I was putting this together, it's, it, I'm going to click this, this uh, database and then open query. It's, it's a little bit slow, it's, it'll take about a minute and 10 seconds. But that's a kind of a painful time to stare at a blank screen, so I wanted to keep you entertained. So you'll see me pull in a video of the uh, fastest person ever to solve Super Mario Brothers. And what we're going to see here is that we're going to see which wins if the guy gets to the end of level two before Access can pull in the data from SharePoint. Okay, so we're going to double click the query and Right now, Axis is talking to SharePoint. I'll pull in the Super Mario Brothers clip, and we're off. So this guy actually solves the entire game in five minutes. Does anyone have 8-bit music running through your head right now? Again, the question is, does he get to the end of level two or not? I get, by the way, at this point that he's incredibly frustrated because like 30% of his time is spent waiting for the game to transition between levels. Access is still querying. Yeah, that's pretty impressive. Okay, and we're almost done. I, I don't know, it's, pretty, it's a close call. All right. So 2007 performance, again, really good. 2,000 records, 40,000 records, not so great. Let's go to 2010 and, look, and replay that into that same test. So I've got a database here on my desktop that connects to the very same database. database. Open it up. Click on query, it appears. Thank you. Thank you. Excellent. Okay, let's return to the deck now. Okay. So let's go and talk a little bit about the numbers behind that. Got three charts to show you. This is the impact on working set. Because Access 2007 is constantly reading and writing from that XML blog in memory, the working set was quite large. Uh, once you had 50,000 records, you were talking about a quarter of a gig. So it's significant. Uh, now, of course, Access 2010, you can see the working set it does not uh, increase with the size of the data. It's constant, which makes sense because we're reading and writing from disk. Now, 
The first time you open the data, access 2010 is actually worse than 2007. And when you think back to that architecture slide that I showed you, this makes sense. Because we're still pulling in all that data from SharePoint using the Web Service APIs, and we're actually paying an additional penalty to write it into local tables. But let's take a look at what the time looks like for the second, third, fourth, fifth, every subsequent request for the data. It's really, really, really quick. It's the performance that you saw in that demonstration. So again, we think this, is a re this really expands the set of applications that you can build using Access 2010 against SharePoint. So, what you saw me do here is connect to 40,000 records, pretty large amount of data with, with Access, and render it in less than a second and group it. Okay, so now I want to talk about, I want to return to a topic I talked about earlier, which is the impact of your reports. Your reports only have an impact if they're distributed to the people who use them. And that distribution needs to be efficient and it needs to be simple. And we think the nature of collaborating on databases and collaborating with reports has changed a lot in the last couple of years. We think that people now expect to be able to use databases from within a web browser. And so that's why this week, we're tremendously excited to come here and announce Access Services, which is a brand new service on SharePoint. And what Access Services allows you to do is build a database in Access, push the Publish button, publish it to SharePoint, and have the forms, queries, reports and macros run inside a web browser. And we think this is really important because it goes back to that distribution problem. It enables you to get your database out there so that the people who are using your reports can get to it easily without requiring a client installation of a particular version of access and crossing geographical boundaries. Because today's workforce is a lot more geographically distributed than it was 16 years ago when we created that Northland invoices report. So let me give you a taste of access services, and, uh, and then we'll take questions. So we're turning back to the demo machine. I'm going to open up this database. This is the Access template that we're shipping with Access 2010. And it's a web template. It's a web database. It means it works equally well in the Access client or inside a browser. And by the way, there's no ActiveX involved here. It's all just HTML and JavaScript. So it all works cross-browser. So this is the Access database. Current assets, retired assets, a couple of reports, listing all the assets, grouping them by category, showing the assets that are retired. So let's see this actually running inside the browser. I'm going to browse to assets 206. I just published it right before I came here. I would publish right now, but I'm running, I think I'm running out of time for Q&A. And I, there are plenty of other opportunities this week to see the publish operation. Here's the data that's running inside the browser. The same data, the same reports, the same forms, the same macros, like the macro that I authored earlier, are running inside the browser. Each object is compiled into a web-compatible version. So all the table data that you create in Access is published up as SharePoint lists. All the forms are custom ASPX pages. Not sure. This this might it's doing a little bit of extra stuff here. I'm not sure what it's doing. Um, and all of the reports actually are run at in reporting services. So when we publish up, we create RDL, report definition language. So here we'll take a look at the reports running in the browser. The macros that I authored earlier, those run on the web too. Some of them run as JavaScript. And some of them run as workflow. And that depends on whether they're more UI-focused or more data-focused. 
We'll give this report a second to uh, a second to load. There we go. So the whole application runs equally well in the client and in the browser. Let's just quickly recap what I showed you over the course of the last 40 minutes. Access allows you to join together a variety of data sources, in particular, SharePoint data sources, SharePoint lists themselves, and BCS data. Access enables you to effectively query large lists of data, tens of thousands of records. We've got a simple designer that quickly enables you to create great reports and customize them to the look you want. And now, with Access Services, we make the distribution problem really simple. Just point your users at a URL. We've got a couple more sessions over the course of the week where we're going to go into much more detail on Access Services. I'm going to quickly go over them, and you can come to them hopefully and tell your friends about them. Tomorrow, we're going to be talking, the, the talk tomorrow at 9 a.m. is a full hour of access services from start to finish, a real introduction at a much higher level of depth than what I've been to today. On Wednesday, we have two talks. One is the advanced techniques for developing macros that run equally well in the client and server. The other one addresses a really interesting problem, which is, you may have a lot of access databases in your organization today, and you may not know how to manage them. This talk at 1.15 gives you strategies for finding out how access is used in your organization and using SharePoint to manage it better. Finally, on Thursday, we finish up with a talk, a deep dive technical talk, uh, that goes under the hood and talks about how access services works. That's my talk. I really appreciate everyone coming here. I'm happy to take questions for as long as you want to be here, and as long as I'm not hungry. So uh, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll take questions now. Where's he? Um, there are a bunch of different ways I can answer that. Uh, I'm trying to think if you're asking from a business, from a business perspective or a technical perspective. Yep. So when you push the, this, I think will become uh, really clear. I know I just talked. I really just touched on access services for five minutes. It will become really clear in the talks uh, over the next couple of days. When you push the publish button, you're actually compiling access, the access application into its own site. So for every access application that you push to the server, you actually create a new SharePoint site, subsite within an existing site. So it's no longer an ActDB. You've basically transformed it into an access services application. Sure. Not totally. In my last demo, I took an application that we built over the last couple of months to be a web database and moved it. So it's not an existing application that was built 10 years ago. Now, uh, the talk on Wednesday is specifically targeted at the existing application scenario. And what I'll share the details there about what works and what doesn't work. So that There are two caveats to the answer yes. One is your data needs to be SharePoint compatible, and not all data in previous versions of Access is SharePoint compatible. And two, the forms and reports that you've created in previous versions, they don't move to the server. You need to create new forms and reports. So one of the things that we'll show you on Wednesday, in order for them to work inside the browser, one of the things that we're going to show you on Wednesday in that talk is taking an existing application, making sure that the data is compatible with SharePoint, and pushing the publish button. At that point, the data is in SharePoint, 
The forms and reports are all centrally managed, but they can't be used within the browser. But at that point, you're free to create new forms and reports that do work in the browser. I know that that's a, bit of, that's a lot to swallow, which, we have, which is why we have some more sessions on it. It's not the same as just pushing the ActDB into a document library, and by its nature, it is absolutely a multi-user application. Yeah, it's a multi-user application. Yeah. Yes. 
Yes. Whenever you, so we actually do smart syncing, so we just see the disks, not the whole data. And that happens every time you reopen the database or you push the big refresh button access, you will sync out all the changes. Just the LTA, yeah. so the performance is pretty good. Yes? Yep. I think it comes down to us. Uh, this is for, for new joints. Oh, yeah, thank you. So, sure. So the question here was now that SharePoint allows you to pull down. Uh, uh, multiple fields from a related table. Why would you use one technology versus another? So SharePoint is certainly is getting more on um, top they are. They're getting more and more functionality in terms of doing queries. Um, I think if you're still looking for if you're looking for ad hoc queries where you can really join together an arbitrary number of lists, do joins on to grouping by them and sorting and filtering on them, the access uh, designer allows you to do that more easily and with more flexibility than SharePoint does. Although, I'm, as I said, I'm happy that they're, they're making a lot of progress there. Yep. So the question was, if we're pulling in, if I understood correctly, if we're pulling in the data into SharePoint, uh, into access at local tables, with a diagram that I showed you, and then we're publishing back it back up, does that create sort of duplicate copies of the data? And you're doing something tricky. You're combining two of my demos. And the reason I say that is because the workflow for creating an access services application is different than the workflow for just building an access application that talks to SharePoint. Um, and uh, if you do the, if you, if you go on an access services application, you actually start with local data and then publish it rather than sort of importing data from SharePoint. Demos later. Actually, let me just repeat the question for folks over here. This gentleman asked, uh, when you publish up, do the tables get just turned into lists? And the answer is that they do. And then the follow-up question was, can you do things like attach net receivers and create custom views on them? Like any other list, you can. And in fact, we've got a demo in the advanced one on top of it. Yeah, we'll show that off. Yeah. Right, 
Thanks very much.